Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to Formative Film School. I'm Ted with the A-Team and today I'm here with Stephen Aird. Today we're going to be talking about what the five critical things to listen for are when you're on a film location. The first thing you should be monitoring is the space itself. When you show up to the location, be listening critically for what's going on in it, where are we shooting, is this an active space? You want to tune your ears into all these extraneous extra sounds that are going on because your prime focus in recording sound on sets is going to be to get that dialogue. As you guys know, when you shoot a scene, you shoot it multiple times and then you cut those multiple takes together. If the sound behind it, the atmospheric sound, is underlying all the dialogue, you won't be able to cut between takes. The second thing that you're going to be listening for is stuff that could potentially happen in the space. I'm talking about things like appliances or door chimes or air conditioners and stuff that you might not necessarily have control over and where you might have to do that thing where you look at the director and be like, well, I guess we can live with it or see if they're okay with it. And that's kind of the through line that you have to go with some of the time. Anything that you can possibly unplug and get rid of, unplug those, get rid of those now. Look out for those potential hazards and save yourself time later when you're actually shooting. So the third thing is gonna be the wardrobe. Worst case scenario, you're gonna show up on set and you're not gonna know what people are wearing. You're gonna see what they're wearing and you're gonna be surprised and you're gonna be scratching your head as to how, how you're gonna figure out that problem and where you're gonna put a lob on somebody. Mm -hmm. So it's always best to have a heads up on that by starting that conversation with the wardrobe department, especially if you're doing uh, something like a period piece or uh, a genre based. Where they have a lot of baggy thing. clothes exactly. and a lot of baggy articles. Yeah. If you can't plan for it, just listen for it. Listen for fabric rustling, listen for if there's leather clothes and they're slapping against someone as they walk. Listen for those things and make sure that if you can, try to get rid of them, or if possible, do a quick wardrobe change or change the props or jewelry that's hanging. Get rid of all that as well. So props are integral as part of the storytelling process, but oftentimes for sound, they can, they can be not so good. Uh, I'm talking about things like uh, glasses or papers maybe that people have. Something that uh, is going to make the character more expressive or help them out in some way for the story. Look at these props, see what their kind of action is in the frame, and see if you can talk to the AD or the actor even about minimizing their movement. A good example of this would be dinner scenes, for example. If you're on a close-up with somebody, yeah. They don't have to be stabbing stuff with their fork and knife. They can just like mime that. and pretend exactly. to be cutting out their food. Yeah. A lot of the time we say on film sets that performance comes first. So if the actor says, I need this cap gun to make its noise, otherwise I won't be able to act properly, they get their say. Honestly, they will win out in those arguments. However, your job in sound is just to actually bring up the conversation in the first place and say, hey, this thing's making a lot of noise. It's just something to think about. It's about having variation and most of all options because yeah. post people will love you for having the option. So the fifth thing we're going to talk about is the floor. Now this might seem obvious, but each floor has a different sound to it. When you're doing uh, close-up shots maybe and they're still on kind of hardwood floor, something creaky or something like that. In this case we're wondering what we're trying to get rid of that thumping noise or that yeah. footstep noise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can throw some carpet down, make it, you know, way easier. For wide shots when you're seeing feet and the floor's not that great, I use these great things called hush heels. You can find them at a local audio store near you. If you're doing like a hard marble floor or wood and that's a little bit too much, these are kind of going to act as pads that are going to make it a little bit quieter so you you can get that dialogue a little bit more clean. So that's the episode of Formative Film School. I'm Ted from the A-Team and this is Stephen Harrod. Uh, so make sure to leave us a comment below. This week we want to see one more thing that you should listen critically for when you're recording sound. Uh, we're going to pick one of those comments, give out a version of our Aperture d, &D microphone, which is our new Super Cardioid mic. Uh, but like, subscribe, and we will catch you guys next time.